Hello, good evening, and welcome to Ray Etzler Gymnasium at Crestview High School, where tonight on WOSN, we've got a non-conference matchup between the visiting Hitchville Aces and the homestanding Crestview Knights. I'm Garrett C. Wright, joined alongside Dave Bowen, and Dave, both squads coming off of streaks, unfortunately for the Aces, they've lost three in a row, Crestview with winners of eight in a row, Hicksville wants to get off the schneid, and Crestview wants to keep on winning. Yeah, great Saturday night non-conference action, Garrett, you're right. Great to be your wingman tonight. Hello, high school basketball fans, let's do this. So you take a look at the keys to the game, Dave. What stands out for both sides to, to grab a W here tonight? Well, three important keys tonight. First and foremost, depth of field. Crestview likes to play 10 players, and with depth of field, we're looking at that photography term a little bit there. You can't just focus on one player for Crestview. Um, Hitsville goes seven deep, and I think that could play a role tonight. Last night, Crestview defeated Ada, a spunky Ada squad. Nine players scored for Crestview. The leading scorer for the Knights, Gavin Etzler, did not. So that's going to be a challenge for Hicksville. Second of all, ball security. The Crestview guards are long and lengthy. They like to get in the passing lanes, knock the ball away. Hicksville's going to be challenged. They're going to have to take care of the rock, avoid live ball turnovers, and look for quality looks on offense. And then finally, bait and switch. Hicksville plays a half-court switching man-to-man -man defense. It's very well done. They do a great job with it. It'll be a challenge for Crestview and their guards. It's going to be a neat one to see how both teams fight through the challenges that they pose to each other. Both squads playing back-to-back. -back. We'll see who can come out with a victory here tonight at Crestview. It's the Aces and Knights coming up next here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Loudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at Coldwater or Van Wert or online at loudix.com. Getting set here for tip-off between the Knights and the Aces. Once more, I'm Garrett Seawright, joined alongside Dave Bowen, and we'll bring you all the action. And first, a look at the Aces, 12-5 and five on the season, and 3-2 and two out of the... Green Meadows Conference. Tony Tier, their head coach. And you take a look at the starting five, and Aaron Klima, the starter, uh, the starter we're going to look at tonight, wearing number two, 31 points last night. Dave, a big night for Klima. Yeah, Aaron Klima, he is a stretch four for Hicksville. Leads them in scoring at 12.8 points per game. Second and three-point field goal shooting at 42%. He's their all-everything, the 6'4 senior forward. And then when you take a look at the home standing Crestview Knights, uh, it's been a banner year for Doug Etzler squad, 14 and one, five and one in the Northwest Conference. And when you take a look at their starting five tonight, a lot of experience in the starting lineup, five, four seniors and a sophomore who's played a lot. And now uh, Ren Sheet, that sophomore, the leading scorer after Gavin Etzler held scoreless last night, but the, there could be some mis mismatches for Hicksville in this starting five for Crestview. Yeah, those four guards out front, Hunter, Lickley, Temple, and Etzler, they are playing so well together. They w play through the sophomore Ren Sheets. They really share the ball. They're passing up good shots for great shots. They're really on a roll. Two points from being undefeated, a, a two-point loss to Spencerville, a great game over in Bearcat country earlier in the season, and Crestview is rolling right now, and Hicksville, as you said in the pregame, looking to stop a skid of their own right now with three losses in a row. You take a look at the officials for tonight's ball game. Mark's Tech Schulte, Gary Horseman, and Craig Rufinaw are the officials tonight here in Convoy, making sure we've got high school basketball between uh, these two squads. Hicksville, not a long drive here uh, to Crestview, just right down 49, and They've brought a nice crowd. we got a nice crowd on hand here tonight in Ray Ansler Gymnasium. It has been a good rivalry. Uh, some great games recently in the district tournament at Little Mecca, the Elida Fieldhouse between these two squads. Looking to mix it up now. Let's play some basketball, Garrett. The Knights win the tip off. As Temple works to the high right point. Tightly guarded by Jaden Rosales. Straight away, Etzler for a three. Off the heel, no, but the offensive rebound and put back by Sheets. 
Yeah, Klima and Sheets battling right there on the boards. Sheets comes away with the victory, getting the rebound and the putback for Crestview. Klima tightly guarded in the backcourt. Aces work it down the floor, and Rosales will drop one in. Crestview wants to extend that pressure, but in that situation, you want to fight pressure with pressure. Hicksville does a nice job of scoring. Another easy bucket for Sheets inside three feet, really, and nearly poked away in the backcourt by Carson Hunter. Almost got his hands on it once more as the Aces get it across the timeline. And Rosales takes to the free throw line on the left rail. Sling it back out to Alex Gordon. And Klima will have it once more. A bounce to Rosales just inside the three-point line. Turn around, right-hand hook shot, dropped it in. Real nice play there by Jaden Rosales. Got in the paint, pivoted out of it, kissed it off the window. Excellent bucket for Hicksville. Lickley for three, quickly splashes it in. Yeah, Nate Lickley shoots 49% from three. That's good enough for second on this squad because Gavin Etzler's right at 60%. Great shot for Lickley there. Rosales in the lane and drops in another one. He's got the first six for the Aces. Looks like we're going to have some offense tonight, Garrett. Seven to six, and we're not even two minutes in the game. Love it. Etzler lets that one go through his hands. And you're right, we've got offense and also neither – Foul has not been committed for either squad here. It's been a pretty clean game on both ends of the floor. Yeah, first turnover of the game as that ball goes through Etzler's hands. The Aces get it into Rosales in the backcourt. He'll work against Etzler. Got beat off the spot there for just a moment. And now Gordon throws in the near corner to Klima. We mentioned he had 31 points last night in a four-point loss to Tenora. Quarterback from the football squad this fall. Gordon in the high post, looking to hand it off to somebody and has to just get rid of it to Brody Bowser. Gordon to the window, and he's called for the charge. Nate Lickley sets him up. He rotates over. That's where most of your charges happen. It's not the guy guarding the basketball. It's defensive rotation. Nate Lickley does a great job right there. He is tied on the team with, uh, for Crestview with five charges. Make it six now. He takes the lead over teammate senior Carson Hunter. Knights with a one-point advantage, seven to six. This Temple throws left to Lickley at the high left point. Tries to bounce low to Sheets. Extra pass into the far corner. Didn't get a lot on it, though. And they'll sling one in the near corner. Carson Hunter gets his defender in the air. Will fire another cross-court pass to Temple. Hands off to Etzler. Sees an opening, rises, fires, hits. That is a great possession for Crestview, as we talked about in the pregame. Passing up good for great. That was a great shot. They had some other shots they could have taken during that possession, but they were real patient. So a three-point lead for the Knights. So we approach five minutes to go here in his first quarter. Rosales with six so far for the Aces. Klima thought about the three, and instead will take to the high post, had his pocket picked, but he's able to get the basketball. Gordon pumps, spins, leans, fouled, and Ren Sheets picks up his first foul of the evening. I like how Alex Gordon was not deterred by the offensive charge of possession before he attacked the basket again. And talking with Coach Tier, he'd like to see a little more production out of Alex Gordon. We're going to see the replay right here. Spins to the 10 right there and gets Sheets out of position, draws the foul, going to the line to shoot two, where he is second on the team, a 64% free throw shooter. Drops in the first to trim the lead to two, make it 9-7 on the Loudix Jewelry scoreboard. And when you want to see more production out of a specific player, what do you do? You go to him early, and that's exactly what Hicksville's done in the last two possessions with Gordon. And he hits them both in that time down the floor, Dave. You see a little more calm, a little more cool, ratcheted down a little bit after picking up the, the foul on the charge the last time down. Yeah, had his head up, looked to see what he had. Nice job. Draws the foul, nails the two freebies. That's to the top of the key, throws left to Lickley. Plenty of time to rise and fire. Went two-thirds of the way down, dropped out, and it goes out of bounds off the Knights. Good check out there on Sheets by Hicksville in order to keep him off the glass that time. Gets a hand on it, but can't reel it in. Brody Balzer will throw in for Hicksville. Into Rosales. Dribbles behind the back to get past the defender. Angles to the middle of the floor. Kicks to Balzer. To the left block. Bounces back straight away to Langham. 
Rosales crosses over, spins in the lane, blocked by Etzler. Loose, goes right back to him, turn around off the heel, no. And Ren Sheets climbs the ladder and gets the rebound. Hunter surveys, gives to Temple in the lane. He'll slap it off the backboard. Mitch Temple with the bucket. He had 16 points in the game last night to improve his points per game to 9.5. Gets started there with a nice bucket. Get the assist to Sheets. Lead grows back to three for the Knights. As Langham has it at the top of the key, works right. Gives off to Tatum Sheets in the ball game for the first time. Hicksville moving the ball, swinging it back and forth, dribbling it back and forth. That, that's great offense. Get the defense out of position. Be patient. Doing a nice job in this offensive set. Crestview playing some good D as well. Rosales to the window. High off the glass. Couldn't get it. Lick leaderboard. And that's where the 6-3 sheets on the 5-6 Rosales comes into play a little bit right there. Rosales, great move. Just can't get it over. Etzler there. Lickley dropped to the floor by Alex Gordon, and quickly he's got his second foul midway through his first quarter. Looks like Austin Sanders is going to come into ball game for Hicksville. Is Gordon going to be forced to take a seat with 3.14 to go here in the first? Yeah, as we said, Coach Tier wants to see him get a little more production. Can't do that when you're sitting on the bench, but the two fouls have put him there. Counter sheets in for Crestview. They get it down low to Etzler. And after being held scoreless last night, he's got four here in the early going. Good. A good passing again by Crestview, getting it down to the block where the 6-3 Etzler, a guard by trade, scores in the paint. Brant Langham, Klima in a near corner to the free throw line. Leans. Got fouled. And Aaron Klima will take two from the free throw line. He's a crafty left-hander is Aaron Klima and does a nice job there drawing the foul on Crestview's number 11. That's Jared Harding. Uh, we've seen some substitutions for Hicksville. They've gone 70. Crestview has three players in off the bench right now in Klein, Connor Sheets, and Jared Harding joining starters Gavin Etzler and Nate Lickley. Klima's first free throw up and go to 57.4% free throw shooter. He got them both. Looked like a 90% free throw shooter on those two, Garrett. <laughs> that Nicely he did. Done. Yes. Cuts the lead to three at 13 10. 2.45 to play here in his first quarter. Atzler at the high left point. Throws right to Lickley into the far corner. I'll get it down low to Harding. Three straight away from Etzler. No, clean to the board. And Hicksville can knot it up here. Aces working around a perimeter. Get to Sanders. Might have got away with a travel. Klima at the free throw line. Back to the basket. Trying to create a little bit of room and trying to find somebody to get it to. Yeah, did Finally a nice gets job. It. Yeah, did a nice job going to his right, but wanted to spin back to his left. Harding with good defense. Aces. Here he comes again. Patient. Klima in the lane, hangs, hits. Nicely done. Keeps his body between the ball and the defender. Again, comes hard right, but he's going to go back to his pet move. Spin to, to the left, kisses it off the window. Nice job. We're starting to see why he had 31 points last night. Etzler to the window. Instead, gives the extra pass. Easy jumper for Harding off the heel. And Klima, you saw on that last time down, David, uh, being a left-hander, it gives him just that much more space when he works from that left side of the floor against the defender. And the offense is set up to give him those driving lanes, that opportunity. He does a nice job taking advantage of at the open floor. Klima has the basketball now for the Aces, trailing by one as we approach one minute to play in this opening quarter. In a tough spot now, has to get rid of it, does to Sanders, and a timeout called by the Aces. Tony Tier didn't like something he saw, and we'll step aside. A one-point advantage for Crestview here in the first quarter on WOSN. Tonight's instant replay sponsor is Carey Insurance and Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth programs and our communities. It's a one-point game here at Crestview. Knights with the one-point lead, and Tony Tier takes that timeout here with just over a minute to go. Dave, what do you think he saw, and what was the message to his squad there? I think he just saw they were just a little bit out of sync, and he just wanted to get on the same page, 
and unfortunately a turnover coming out of the timeout. The worst thing you want to have happen in that situation, especially turn out here or turn timeout early. Sorry about that, Derek. And uh, it's going to be Crestview basketball. So the turnover gives the Knights the basketball with 60 seconds to go in a quarter. As Hunter holds it on the left wing, still holding, gives to Temple now. Isaac Klein bounces in the far corner. Seeing a good look at the switching defense by Hicksville on this possession. Temple, free throw line, hands off to Hunter. Jump stops in the lane, leaves one for Sheets. That's six first quarter points for the sophomore. And that's what Carson Hunter's really improved at as the year has gone on. Quality passes give him the assist. Sheets with the finish. Rosales, good first couple of minutes for the Aces, has gone silent since. As Tatum Sheets throws up a shot, no, his own rebound, put back off the mark, blocked. And Mitch Temple has the basketball in the backcourt, crosses with 15. Near corner three, no, instead, they'll drive. Hunter will set up for three, can't get it, and Sheets called for the over the back. Nice check there by Hicksville on Sheets to draw the personal. Good look for Hunter on the wing. Crestview has snapped the ball offensively to get good looks against that switching man. Uh, unable to come up with the bucket there. Second foul committed by Sheets. Klima from three-quarter court. Good if it goes. And just shy of the bucket, we played one quarter. Crestview leads Hicksville by three, 15 to 12 here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Loudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them in Coldwater or Van Wert. You can find them online at loudix.com. 15-12, here is the second quarter about to get underway. And Dave, what stood out to you there in that first quarter for both sides? For Hitsville, I really like the quickness of their guards on offense. They do a nice job of dribbling and dribble driving and penetrating, and that negates that height advantage that Crestview has at the guard position. They're very comfortable with each other as far as knowing where each other is offensively, doing a nice job attacking the basket with quickness at the guard position. Crestview, they've snapped the ball around. They've passed up good for great. Uh, offensively with their shooting. And again, we just had a really good offensive first quarter for both squads. Brody Bowser lobs down low to Klima in a tough spot, throws it out of bounds off a of Temple. It'll stay with the Aces. We look at some stats. Hicksville was five for six from two point, 83% in the first quarter, four for four from the line, one turnover. And then for Crestview, they were six for eight from two for 75%, one for five from three, and also only had one turnover. And that that's a that's why we're at three points. Carson uh, Hunter picks up his first foul, and really, you, you look at uh, Hicksville can't play better in the first quarter. They're 83% from the floor, 100% from the line. It doesn't get better than that, no, really. No, that, that's impressive, and, and again, that's because they've been fluent on offense, really snap the ball, finding each other, getting quality looks against this Crestview defense. Sanders between the circles, guarded by Nasir Easterling in a ball game for the first time. Jaden Rosales to the window. Too strong. Rebound by Etzler, and he'll push the tempo quickly. Lickley eyed to rim for just a moment. Instead, Hunter holds it between the circles. Into that far corner. Temple on the drive. Foul committed by Klima, his first. They cannot afford to have Klima pick up a second personal in this quarter. He'll have to play with it if he does. They already have their other big Alex Gordon on the bench with two fouls. And we mentioned in the pregame and here in the first quarter where Aces go about seven deep and any farther than that, they're not real comfortable playing with any any farther down the bench than seven. Temple, the entry pass on a block, lost a handle on it, kicks back out to Hunter. Thought about the three, instead baseline drive, lays it off the glass, no, put back for Easterling's up and good. Nasir Easterling does a great job of hitting the offensive window right there, the hoop in the harm, the old fashioned way. Chance for the three point play for Easterling. We're going to see it on the carry insurance replay. Good penetration by Hunter, and the Sierra Easterling just goes and gets that. That's what you want when you're bringing a big guy off the bench like that, give you that energy. Absolutely misses the free throw attempt. Hunter the board. Lickley bounces it, got cut off. 
by Brant Langham. Nice, nice steal by, by, there by Brant Langham, the most improved player on this Hicksville squad from beginning of the season to now. Coach Tears has been very happy with his progress. That one goes into backcourt. And it's a over and back. So trading turnovers here early in the second quarter. Crestview has the basketball once more as Carson Hunter will throw it in. You see Austin Sanders take a seat on the bench for the Aces. As Hunter holds, lobs down low to Temple, and that's as efficient as you can be offensively. Coach Tears going to call timeout. Little upset. There's no rotation there defensively to help on the lob pass to Temple. Crestview's grown the lead to seven here in the second quarter on WOSN. Instant replays tonight brought to you by Carey Insurance and Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth programs and our communities. Press U begins the second quarter by scoring the first four points. And uh, this quarter has been a, a little different than the start of the first quarter where it was high quality offense, everybody feeling each other out. And now you've got, you know, eight minutes of basketball under your belt. You're a little more familiar with what each side wants to do. Yeah, making adjustments coming into the second quarter, playing a little uh, more focused mentally, defensively, both squads. A couple turnovers have occurred as well. I just got to say we appreciate Carey Insurance as our instant replay sponsor. Randy Carey, the owner of uh, Carey Insurance, a Crestview grad, played on this very floor uh, as a senior back in 1992, a couple days ago, Garrett. <laughs> uh, probably a little less gray in the, in the <laughs> hair, a little less gray in the beard then. I just had more hair back then. <laughs> Ace is pressured out of the timeout as Alex Gordon back at the ball game after picking up two fouls there in the first quarter. He'll get to Brant Langham and he'll get to Rosario, or Rosales, excuse me, in the far corner. Gordon nearly stolen away. Temple gets his shoulder. Originally looked at the official like, how could that be? And then thought, you know, yeah, actually, you know what? That's probably a foul. Yeah, Crestview came out in a 1-3-1 zone defense out of that timeout by Coach Tier. See if they stay in it on the dead ball or if they go back to man-to-man. -man. They're going to stay in the 1-3-1. Defensively, what is the advantage there for Crestview on, to the personnel of Hicksville right now? You're looking at, first of all, Hicksville's had a lot of success dribbling the ball across for the reversals and everything. You're taking that fluid fluidity away from them a little bit as we see the tough shot right there by Gordon. And your, your length comes into play more. Crestview has, as we've talked about, a length advantage at the guard position especially, making it tough for those Hicksville guards to find open teammates and also penetrate against that zone. The Knights lead by seven after forcing the turnover on the defensive end. Temple holds, gets to Etzler. Cross-court pass to Lickley, wide open for three, and he's got another one. Yeah, Nate Lickley has just had an outstanding season from behind the arc. He's improved his defense this year for Crestview, and that's just made his uh, feeling of comfortability on offense that much more significant. Gordon at the left wing, holds it high above his head. I like Alex Gordon back in the game now. He's got to be smart not to pick up a third, but they need him on the floor. And again, he's got to make himself presentable down on, on the block offensively. Jaden Rosales double teamed. Langham underneath the bucket, stolen away by Hunter. It's a four on two. He'll hold in the near corner. Temple all day to set up for three off the heel. Etzler the board, double teamed, bounces to Hunter. Fires it to Easterling, but it's stolen away by Klima. Right idea. You like your post player to step to the basketball. Easterling did not do that. The Hicksville player able to get between the passer and the catcher on that one and gets a deflection turnover on the Knights. So a 10-point lead now for Crestview. Get it down low to Langham. Thought about letting it fly. Instead, Rosales will for three. Too strong. Offensive rebound by Gordon. Great offensive rebound right there by Alex Gordon. Avoids fouling. And again, going against a zone defense, sometimes you can get in those lanes a little bit better and rebound. He Brody, does right there. Brody balls are for three. Too strong. Lickley the board. Temple gives to Lickley. Another wide open three. And Lickley feeling it from behind the arc. He had a game earlier this year where he hit seven threes in a row in the first half. Didn't hit 
hit it in the second half. I think at halftime he sat down and realized, what did I just do? <laughs> and he's a high school kid. It got to him a little bit. And, again, uh, just having a great year uh, for the Knights. Knights now doubling up Hicksville, still looking for their first bucket of the quarter. More than halfway gone. Klima, Gordon, cross-court pass to Balzer. Klima will let one fly from the top of the key. Left it short, and here come the Knights once more. Hunter to the high post. Kicks back to Etzler. In the lane, hangs, affected. And Gordon will grab the loose basketball for the Aces. Yeah, Carson Hunter again with a great decision, great pass. There's He gets a deflection there. Nearly stolen away. Would have been an easy breakout for the Knights. Instead, Gordon has it in the high post. Rosales for three. Can't hit. Aces have a lid on the bucket as Easterling grabs the board. Gordon picks up his third foul. Yeah, and he's his nonverbals are complete dejection on his part. He knows that's foul number that three, and he's coming out of the game. He, he knows he was, it was a hustle play. You know, as a coach, Coach Tier giving him a high five right there. It was a hustle play. That happens. It's just you don't want that to be foul number three. You'd prefer that to be foul number one on a hustle play. And I was going to say, I imagine the, the message to Alex Gordon when he goes back to the scores table, the last thing he hears is you can't pick up a foul. Here. Exactly. So Etzler throws left to Kellen Putman. Ren Sheets, or excuse me, Connor Sheets. Triple teamed. Lickley's got another. Inside out action, the best way if you're a three point shooter, you want to catch the ball coming out of the post. Counter sheets with the assist. Hicksville with under three to play here in the second quarter still hasn't put a marker on the board. It's a 13 0 run for the Knights to begin the second quarter. As Rosales in a tough spot, able to pass out of it. Klima down low. Trying to lean, instead gets to Rosales, thought about the three, drives, spins in a tough spot. Will put up the shot, can't hit once more. Wade sheets the rebound. That was about the only thing that Jaden Rosales could do there. No teammates were open. And it was a fourth shot, but he had a good look, actually, and it just didn't go down for him. Harding. Wide open, Etzler on the block, fouled, can't hit, but he'll step to the free throw line. What we've seen here in the second quarter, especially offensively for Crestview, that switching man-to-man -man defense, Crestview has snapped the ball on offense. We said that in the pregame. They'd have to do that against the, the switching man. They've done it. They've been able to get some open looks here, and uh, they draw the foul. It's going to be under out of bounds, I believe. Yeah, Etzler checks out of the ball game. Now they're saying, nope, come in. Uh, the official originally didn't signal two shots, and now they are saying yes. Okay. So Temple will come back to the scorer's table. And I guess we're going to talk about it now. One official, I think, thinks we're shooting free throws. The other has everybody set up out of bounds. So now Etzler will come out of the <laughs> ball game. Mitch Temple will come back in. And Wade Sheets. And nobody's upset about what's right. happening. We just got to get it right. Everybody get on the same page. So Sheets takes the inbounds, trying to get it right back to Temple. Instead, gives to Lickley, who's been hot here to start this ball game. 12 points, all coming on threes. Temple, the top of the key. Kellen Putman in the game now for Crestview. That's number 10 as far as players in the game thus far for the night. And Jared Harding gets a bucket off the bench. A and big the lead kiss off the window for Harding there. Lead now 18 for the Knights. This 1-3-1 one, one is just really stymied Hicksville offensively. Nice uh, cross-court pass there. Klima stops the bleeding, the first basket here in this second quarter with just over 90 seconds to go. Yeah. Ends the Crestview 15-0 run. Yeah, real nice pass there. The diagonal is what you want to look for against the 1-3-1. One, Hicksville finds it there. Another bucket from Harding going straight to the mid post, rising, firing, and hitting. 32-14 on the Loudix Jewelry scoreboard. Klima got the bucket last time down for Hicksville. Cross-court pass to Balzer. Or excuse me, Langham. Klima tries to go up with a shot. Fouled by Wade Connor Sheets, excuse me. And he, that's his first. You'll, You'll see it. on a carry insurance replay. Yeah, nice pass by Brant Langham. And then Klima does exactly what you want a, a post player to do in that situation. Don't be shy. Go attack that backboard. Attack the rim. If the defense is, is in the way, you're going to take him for a ride. That's exactly what he does right there. Got to go to the line and finish it, though. Reward yourself. Hit the first two free throws he shot early in the first quarter. Got that one to go. Klima with seven after scoring 31 last night. 
Just over a minute to play here in this first half. It's a 17-point lead now for Crestview. Mitch Temple slowly walks the ball up the floor. Crosses over to the near sideline. Knights want to post up. Connor Sheets looking for the basketball. Cross court pass to Lickley, wide open for another three, and he's got five. He is in another dimension offensively. Man, he's, he's shooting the ball like he's getting free dessert on his birthday right now. You smell confidence, L-I-C-H-T-L-E, Lickley. 20 point advantage now for Crestview. Under 30 seconds to play in a quarter. Lickley four of four from deep. A three there, a nice answer from Balzer. Yeah, Brody Balzer, he's the glue guy for Hicksville. He does the dirty work, but right there does a nice job with that left hand hitting the three ball. Rosales going to pick up his first foul there, trying to cut off the drive. And when we talk about glue guys, we're talking about guys who talk a lot to teammates, who get on the ground, die for loose balls. Balls are the senior. He's been in Coach Tears' program, obviously, all four years. And uh, Coach Tears real proud of those little things that he does to try and make his team better. Free throw from Temple. Too strong after the seventh foul committed by Hicksville. Under set, 10 seconds to go in the quarter. And the aces work left. Rosales fouled by Connor Sheets. And there's that speed. Crestview steps out. The post player steps out uh, on the screen. But Rosales, just so quick, does a nice job. And Sheets commits the personal. Rosales going to go to the line where he's the leading free throw shooter for Hicksville at 75%. Five seconds remain in this opening quarter. Rosales left a little strong on the front end of the one and one. Harding, long three, can't hit. And that'll do it for the first half of play. Crescio starts the quarter on a 15-0 run. They got a 17-point advantage here in the at the halftime break. 35-18. Coming back with third quarter action here on WOSN. Scoreboard sponsor, Loudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them in Coldwater or Van Wert or online at loudix.com. Second half about to get underway, 35-18. Knights will begin with the basketball. And Dave, for as good as the first quarter went for Hicksville, the second quarter went about as poorly as it could have gone. And for they the got Aces. outscored by Crestview 20-5 in the second quarter. Coach Tier, I'm sure at halftime, talked about uh, we got to make sure that we do a good job of uh, attacking the gaps in the zone defense, and then on defense we got to communicate more clearly. And Lickley, he he starts off right where he left off, hitting another three for the Knights. Well, so he missed. That's his first miss. It just got sent right back to him that he put back up and up and through the through the hoop as Klima drops it in, but he's called for the charge. And I believe that's Nate Lickley taking yeah, it Lickley again, and he it. earned that one. Klima said, okay, I'm going to go see if I can make the official make a decision. We're going to see it on the carry insurance replay right here. Lickley rotates over, takes that one right in the chest, and uh, Klima came down and landed on him as well. But Crestview, uh, Coach Etzler, he, he wants to keep the ball moving on offense like it's on fire against that switching man-to-man -man defense. Six players scored. One of them who didn't was Carson Hunter, but he was involved with several plays as an assist mm -hmm. man. And then um, Crestview, if, if anything Coach Etzler wants to address, I think we extended our defense in that first quarter, guys. We can do that, but we can't give up points at the right. paint, at the bucket in that situation, and that occurred. So he switched to that zone the second quarter, and that was a major reason why, why Hicksville had, a tr had trouble scoring. Here come the Knights. Temple gives to Ren Sheets. Hunter holds. Surveys, gets in a far corner to Jared Harding. Who had a, oh, he stepped on the sideline. Harding dropped in four points there in the second quarter. And he comes in for Lickley, gets a breather, and Lickley's right back in. Some first half stats from our stat man, Brad Hughes. Hicksville was seven for 15 from the floor for 47%, and five for seven for the foul line. They only had three turnovers tonight. 14 for 24, 63%. 
They were 0 for 2 from the line. They also only had three turnovers. A very clean half turnover-wise for both squads. Klima in the high post. Guarded by Sheets. Goes right at him. Alex Gordon playing with three fouls. Stripped by Carson Hunter and just picked up his fourth. Not what you want to have happen if you're a Hicksville Aces fan. And right away, Coach Tears got to bring in Tatum Sheets for Gordon. Again, they want to get the ball down to him on the block, but he's got to take care of it. Had the turnover and then retaliated with the personal foul. So with four fouls now, is conceivably Gordon on the bench till the fourth quarter? Uh, yes and no. When you're down 20, you might make a decision to bring him in early. Nice play there for Sheets. Did his homework early, did Wade Sheets, Ren Sheets right there. Posted up, and who gets the assist? None other than the quarterback, Carson Hunter, gets it into Sheets. Sheets has eight now, and the lead is 22. Klima for three. Yes. Nice form from the lefty out there behind the arc. That's why we call him a stretch four. We've seen him post up on the block. We've seen him nail it from behind the line, dealing from distance. One Aaron Klima. He's got ten now. Bounce pass to Sheets, double teamed. Looking for the open man. Gives to Temple at the left elbow. Stripped from behind, got the loose basketball. Etzler, floater. Hits every bit of the rim and doesn't drop. Yeah, that's one where you'd like to see Etzler take one more dribble and power it off the window. That's a tough shot, a little floater from the side. Klima will rise and fire once more. Too strong on that one. Temple the board. I like the look from Klima right there. Hit his last shot. Good look. Hunter, bullet pass to Lickley. Got another three. His seven. Number seven for Nate Lickley, as you said, Garrett. He's on fire. He's done that before this year he has the propensity that if you leave him open he's going to drill it as we said earlier in the broadcast shoots 49 percent for three why not rosales had six first quarter points finished the half with six looking to get rid of it to klima right in the center circle as we approach five minutes to go here in the third klima leans hunter tried to draw the charge and a foul committed by the knights Nice no call by the official Mark Stetschulte. Hunter tried to draw the charge. Nothing wrong with that, but Klima with the nice spin move and then the foul called on the ensuing rebound. So Lickley, his first, team first in this second half. 22-point lead for the Knights. Now inbound to Klima, has to get rid of it. Right back to Rosales. On the right wing, crosses over, spins in the lane, hangs, blocked by Sheets. Got the loose basketball, though. Rosales puts it up, and the foul. Another nice play by the youngster, Jaden Rosales, the sophomore, 5'6 in stature. Gets the steal, gets it off the glass, and draws the foul. You see a, it on the replay say, here, yes. Great look at that carry insurance replay. The ball just bounced right to him, and he knew exactly what he was doing, went straight to the window. Nicely done, and he, he is. He's quick out there, and that negates some of that height that, that uh, he goes against with the Crestview guards. The second foul committed by Temple. Free throw missed, keeping it a 20-point ball game. As Temple bounces to Hunter. Cross-court pass. Etzler for three. Yes. Gavin Etzler, he is the leading sharp shooter for Crestview behind the arc. 59 and change as far as percentage behind the arc. That's like a lot of guys shooting layups. You'll take that from him out there. Now, he's an Etzler. His dad's the coach. He's put in the time. Not surprised by that percentage uh, with what he's done. And he, he takes quality looks. Kalima contested three, and he'll splash one in. Another quality look for him. Nice shot. And Coach Tears going to take a timeout on the make. So a 43-25 game will step aside as well. Knights with the advantage here in the third quarter on WOSN. Tonight's instant replay sponsor is Carey Insurance in Grover Hill, proudly investing in our youth programs and our communities. The 20-point ball game for Crestview. Timeout called by Tony Tier, the Hicksville head coach, and trying to make sure he gets every opportunity he can to chat it up with his guys and still instruct them here. So we, you know, at Hicksville already with 17 games under the belt. This is game number 18. They've got 
four games basically the rest of the way until February 18th. Yeah, I like the time out there. You're always teaching, looking for a situation where you can help your team improve. You just made a three, so you're coming off a positive with the timeout, and we're going to have a turnover here. Now, foul goes against Ren Sheets, his third. Didn't see it. It was away from the basketball. Not sure what Ren Sheets was guilty of, but the official on the baseline saw it and blew his whistle immediately. Crestview extending their man-to-man -man full court defense here. And as we said, in the first quarter they did this and gave up some good looks, which Hicksville converted on, not on this particular possession, though. No. Braden Slattery with the basketball in the game for the first time. He's called for the travel. A six foot three junior. You see there wearing number 21. So under four to go here in this third quarter. Lickley with seven three-pointers here tonight. I realize I'm sitting next to maybe the Crestview basketball historians. What's it, seven, eight, nine, the, the school oh record? Oh, gosh, I don't know what it is, but he's got to be close. There's eight right there. <laughs> There's number eight for Nick, Nate Lickley. He's going to put us on the spot there and say, you guys better know because I'm chasing it. <laughs> we better figure it out because there's still a long way to go in this one. Lickley with eight threes. He's got 24. Klima crosses over. Hands off Rosales with the left elbow, working against Etzler. Langham, Brant Langham crosses over at the free throw line, gives back to Klima, thought about the deep three, tries to break down Harding, nearly stolen away. Going to be a foul on Isaac Klein, hustle foul. Glad to see Langham's up all right, got rolled up on there. You can see number five giving a thumbs up, but yep, he's all right. I'm a Holmes roll up, if you will. <laughs> Uh, Any time that, that. You, you see it on football all the time on basketball floors, not so often, but glad to see him hop up. He's going to take a seat on the bench, however, with a 23 point lead for the Knights as Jaden Rosales will inbound for the Aces. Into Gordon, who's back in the ballgame. Yep, just going to mention that Alex Gordon back in the game with four fouls. No reason not to play at this point in time. Slattery for three on the way, too strong. Offensive rebound nearly corralled by Sheets. Instead, it goes to the Knights. As Isaac Klein back in the game, crosses over, throws left to Harding. He'll go to the window, puts up a shot, fouled, and Jarrett Harding will step to the line. Jarrett Harding able to take advantage of the movement by Crestview on offense, creates a situation where there's no help. And again, when you're focused on the switching defense, sometimes you forget help principles. Harding able to attack and draws contact, goes to the free throw line. So a 23-point lead for Crestview. Harding looking to extend it. You see the 6'2 junior there. Had four points in the second quarter. And we think getting back to the number of threes in the game that Mr. Lickley is one shy of tying his head coach's record. All right. For most three-pointers in a game. Right now he has... He's got eight. Eight. So we think nine's the record. If we can get confirmation on that, we will. As Harding hits the second free throw. He's got five. It's a 50-26 game. As Rosales across the timeline, guarded by Isaac Klein. Rosales angles to the near side, to the left block, picks it up. Fires to Gordon straight away. Rosales in the near corner, one of the three instead. Drives baseline, goes up and under. Can't hit a fancy shot, nearly dropped. As Connor Sheets grabs the board for the Knights. Good offensive possession there by Hicksville. They're cutting and moving. Crestview, good defense. Rosales with a tough shot. Crestview with the rebound, but that's what I like seeing. Both teams not playing to the scoreboard, they're playing to the possession. Harding, cross court pass, trying to get it to Lickley. Got in the air, decided against the shot, and it was stolen away. Yeah, great defense by Alex Gordon right there. Altered the look for Harding, could get the shot off. Turnover. Rosales gets his screen. Double team now. Gets rid of it to Gordon. Slaughtery comes off in the lane. Floater, no, he's fouled by Sheets. Nice penetration there by Braden Slaughtery. Slattery does a nice job, finds himself at the free throw line. Going to see it on the carry insurance replay. Had a driving lane, 
not shy about it. That's what you want to see, and he's trying to impress his coach, trying to get a little more quality playing time. Does a nice job there. First free throw attempt up and good, putting him on his scoreboard, making it 50-27. You saw on that carry insurance replay a lot of real estate there for Slattery to, you know, work with and drive somewhat deep in that post. And you could see the foul committed by counter sheets. Yeah, and that's something Hicksville hasn't been able to get a whole lot of tonight. They like that weave action and then look for penetration. Crestview's been pretty good defensively overall, but in that situation, there was a breakdown and Slattery took advantage of it. Hunter lobs down low to Connor Sheets. Got his defender in the air and the foul. Connor Sheets does what you should do when you get that high-low pass. The pass comes from the top, from Hunter, down to Sheets, the top to the bottom. It takes away help side opportunities. They come over late, and I believe Alex Gordon just picked up his fifth foul, and he's going to have to take a seat. So Gordon scores two points at the free throw line tonight for the Hicksville Aces, and a great pass. You saw it on the carry insurance in the replay. A nice lob down low from Carson Hunter, right on the mark, right where it needed to be. And the 6'4 junior goes to the line. Too strong on that one. Rebound corralled and by I've, Slattery. I've never been a big fan of the lob pass because I feel like as a postman coach, you need to work hard and get open in front. But if you notice on that replay, we saw how Sheets pushed the defender up created more space and the lob occurred. Balzer's got his second three, six points, under a minute to go now in this third quarter. 52-31 on the Loudoux Jewelry scoreboard. Hunter sprints up the floor, hands off to Lickley. As Klein has it. Harding kicks back to Lickley for the school record tying three, got it! And the crowd knows it, the student section knows it, everybody's standing up giving him a standing ovation. We're still in the third. I bet they're going to give him an opportunity. His head coach, whose record he's looking to beat, he's going to get a shot to get, get that new record for Crestview. He's got nine. He's nine of ten. One got rejected, sent back to him, that he then shot immediately again for three. The ball goes out of bounds off of Crestview. It will stay with the aces. Yeah, you know, his three-point shot right now, it's just it looks... So nice. He's just throwing it from the boat out into the ocean is probably what it looks like for Lakely. This Brady Balzer throws right to Klima. Tightly guarded by Hunter. He'll turn around, fire up a contested three at the horn, and we played three. 55-31. Nate Lickley's tied to school record for threes. He's got 27. Fourth quarter action coming up here on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Loudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them in Coldwater or Van Wert or online at loudix.com. 55-31 to score here. Nate Lickley, number 25 for the Knights. Nine three-pointers tonight, tying the school record, held by his head coach, Doug Etzler. And Dave, you, Doug, do you say, you know, I don't want to lose this record. That's, <laughs> that's my name on the, score, on, the, on the board out there. Should I? You can sit down, son. You've, you've had a pretty good night. Oh, it's not the case at all. <laughs> Coach Etzler would love to see one of his players break his record, and he's going to keep Lickley out there. We'll see if his teammates can find him that look. Again, what we've seen over the progression of the season that's been on display wholeheartedly tonight, Crestview has passed up good for great yep. offensively. They have been unselfish with the basketball. Sometimes when you have a lot of seniors out there, that can be – a challenge for a coaching staff to make sure that happens. Crestview is doing it very, very well tonight, and they have here in the latter half of the season. Trying to get it down low to Klima, stolen away by the Knights. Lickley straight away for the school record. Got it! Mr. Shakespeare, move over. That's poetry in motion for Nate Lickley. He's got a big smile on his face. Congratulations to the Crestview senior. 30 points for Lickley on 10 of 11 from three. Knights with the 58-31 lead, Lickley. Bounces off to Sheets, lays it up and in. Good for great, Lickley just scored, he could have tried to score again, dishes off, giving the assist, Sheets with the bucket. 
60-31. Ren Sheets now with 10. Three on away from Balzer. His, he had two so far here tonight. Long outlet pass to Temple. First bucket for Mitch, or excuse me, third bucket for Mitch Temple. He's got six. And that's what makes Crestview so dangerous. Temple with six. Last night he had 16. Etzler, quite a few points tonight. He had zero. Here's Lickley again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the lid would have came off this joint if Lickley would have been able to bury his 11th, but he's got 10, and his name will go on the board outside the gym as the new school record holder for threes in a game. Bounce pass up ahead. Sheets can't get it. Got his own offensive rebound, though, and he's got 12. Sheets up to 11 points per contest after a nice night last night. 12 so far here tonight. Yeah, Crestview's just been shooting the ball incredibly well tonight. And there's another steal. 89% in the third quarter. They were 6 for 6 behind the arc, which we know Nate Lickley had a lot to do with that in the third quarter. Um, 2 for 3 from the free throw line. And you'll see Lickley will get a standing ovation from the Crestview faithful. Take a look at the carry insurance replay. Just from straight away, had plenty of time to set up. Sets the school record for threes in a game. And you see the reaction. Just a great, great look kid, at it. a great family. Um, just real happy for him and how hard he's worked to be rewarded with that in tonight's contest. Lickley averages just under 10 points a contest, 30 tonight. A fantastic performer, performance by the 6'2 senior. Brant Langham bounces down low, stolen away, lands on the hands of the Seer Easterling. It's a 33-point lead for the Knights. Etzler gives to Hardy. Rosales nearly stole it away. Kick back out. Three on away from Etzler's up and good. Hey, teammate, anything you can do, I can do. Well, maybe not better tonight, but I can put it in the basket out there too. Gavin Etzler with the three-pointer. You talked about earlier, Etzler was the leading three-pointer shooter by percentage. Oh, 10 for 12 ain't bad. I was going to say, it's going to be real close. Coming out of this game, they're going to be side by side. And Crestview has seen some triangle and two defenses this year, and they have been on Etzler and Lickley. So a 36-point lead now for the Knights. Etzler leaves to Easterling, fouled. Another great pass, which catches the Hicksville defense out of position, and the Sear Easterling's going to go to the free throw line. So a 36-point lead. And now the officials point out to the scores table, the clock needs to be ticking. Yeah, we're going to go to that running clock, a lead of 35 or more, and then it'll stay that way until the lead drops below 30. Easterling hits the free throw. Yes, yeah, Owen Stuckey in a ball game for Hicksville. Brant Langham will take a seat on the bench. Wesson Ludwig in the game for Crestview, a senior. Drew Nielsen in the game for Crestview, a senior. Easterling, a 6'5 senior. Got that one to go as well. He's got four. 69-31. It's a nice advantage for the Knights. Crestview in a zone defense. They've been in that zone defense here the latter half of the third quarter and here in the fourth. Not the 1-3-1 that they played in the second quarter. Now they're in a 1-2-2 with Easterling at the top. How, do you, how would you like to have that <laughs> that's, luxury? That's a, you get a 6-5 athletic forward sitting at the top, looking to deny everything. I'm sure there's a lot of basketball squads around the area that would love to have that luxury. Is the Aces working around the perimeter. Bronson Graber in the ball game for Hicksville. As Owen Stuckey. Cross-court pass from Slattery to Sheets. Tatum Sheets throws it high off the backboard, fouled in the act, and he'll shoot two. And as we said uh, earlier in the contest, there have been some great games between Hicksville and Crestview going back a couple, well, back to the 18-19 season at at the Elida Fieldhouse, a district championship game. But this series, I didn't realize it that it was this lopsided with the win tonight. 
They have played 27 times, and Crestview will have a 26 to one advantage. That's wow. just unfathomable, yeah. really. And it, it's it's been a, a solid game for both both programs. I just did not realize that the differential was that that large as far as uh, wins and losses. 2:30 to go. Knights with the lead. Their season high on the scoreboard so far, 72. Getting close to eclipsing that here in the waning stage of this ball game. Drew Nielsen on the left wing. Right down Main Street Drive from Tommy Hefner, a six-foot sophomore, and he'll shoot two free throws. Seeing some JV players get some action now for Crestview and Hicksville. Hefner, the six-foot sophomore guard. Nothing but net on the first one. Eight nights in the score book now with points. Hefner can't hit the second. Rebound pulled down by Sucky. 90 seconds to go. Ace is still playing hard. Stuckey at the free throw line. Backdoor pass. Blocked from behind by Easterling as Tatum Sheets tried to scoop one up and in. Great backdoor cut. Just uh, Nasir Easterling able to recover and get a block. And then, unfortunately, it deflected off a Hicksville player, Crestview basketball. Coming up on one minute to go in this ball game. 70 31 to score for the Knights on the Loudix Jewelry scoreboard. Easterling. Gives right to Klein. Straight away, Nielsen. Or excuse me, Nielsen in the corner for three. Off the front iron. Ludwig the board. Kicks back out to Isaac Klein with 45. Nielsen thought about the three. Steps back and will let it fly. Off the heel, Easterling tips it back out. Loose basketball. Corralled by the Aces with 35 seconds. Most points Hicksville had given up coming into tonight was 65. Nice and a play, hoop yeah. And a harm there by Slattery. Uh -huh. Does a nice spin move in the paint, comes back to his left, finishes, draws the contact. Again, we mentioned him earlier about impressing the head coach, saying, I need a little more playing time. He does it again right here. Coach Tier looking to try and develop some more depth here after uh, Braxton Heisler blew out his ACL back in the Ayersville game. And maybe, maybe Slattery is someone who can do that for him. So that'll do it. Nate Lickley sets the school record for Crestview with 10 three-pointers. 30 points on the scoreboard. Crestview wins at 70-34 over the Hicksville Aces. We'll step aside, come back, and put a bow on this one. Nice victorious here on WOSN. We're back here at Crestview wrapping up a 70-34 victory for the Crestview Knights. And we're joined by Nate Lickley now. And Nate, you got 10 three-pointers tonight, set the school record. When did you know that it was it was feeling pretty good tonight? Oh, you know, at the end of the second or the first half, you know, I had five. I was feeling pretty good. Came out, hit my sixth one. From then on, I just I was feeling it. There, there in the second half, what that what that basket look like to you? Oh man, it, it looked pretty out of the hand. I knew it as soon as I put it up. I mean. One of a once in a lifetime moment, something you can't pass up. How, how good does it feel to get that standing ovation from the crowd here? You know, you're a senior, only got a couple more games left in this gym, but to, to get that ovation, what was going through your mind there when that 10th one went in? I mean, nothing really. It's kind of a mind clear. It's just crazy. You know, something I've wanted to do my whole life. An amazing accomplishment. And I want to thank Coach Etzler for giving me the opportunity. Coming into tonight, did you know who had the school record? I did. <laughs> I did. Did you want to break that school record? I did. <laughs> Doug, I'm sure you know you had to. When did you know that Nate was feeling it and you started to draw things up for him there? Like you said, the first half, I, I don't know if he missed a three. He hits his first one in the second half, and then I thought our guys did a great job of finding him. I and mean, He needs a second, and it's going up. And like you said, I think the basket was humongous, and he, he, he had a rhythm going, and I, I was just pleased that our guys just kept finding him, and he, he kept stepping up and hitting shots for us. First quarter, things went really well for Hicksville, and you guys switched that 1-3-1. How, how big of a difference did that play tonight? 
I think it was big. I think first, first quarter, even though they scored, I thought the tempo was in our favor. We really wanted to pressure, try to wear them down a little bit. They got to the basket a little more than what we wanted to. So we switched it up. I thought we gave them a little bit of trouble in our zone. And it caused us to get out and transition, too. And we really shared the basketball tonight. Well, congratulations on the victory. Nate, congratulations on the school record. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here tonight. Appreciate it. That's Crestview, Nate Lickley, and Crestview head coach Doug Etzler celebrating a 70-34 victory. And Dave Bowen, it's time to name the Stalley Hustle Award winner. And there's no suspense for who the winner is tonight. No suspense at all. Oh, Nate Lickley just had a great game. And again, as Coach Etzler alluded to, the unselfish play of his teammates and Crestview as a whole allowed them to put 74 points on the board. But Nate, it was, it was just humongous. That rim was huge for him tonight. And again, his teammates found him. So Nate Lickley, the school record with 10 three-pointers, a 30-point performance by the 10-point-a-night performer. He is our Stally Hustle Award winner. And for more Stally Hustle Award winners, check out the WOSN YouTube page. That'll do it from us here at Crestview for our fantastic WOSN crew. The Knights victorious tonight, 70-34. to For Dave Bowen, I'm Garrett Seawright saying so long, and we'll catch you next time right here on WOSN.